Hey y'all, it's Dawn, and I'm so glad you're back. I've got another fun, budget-friendly DIY video for you today. This is another collab, and I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Now for the first DIY. This DIY was inspired by Connie at Connie's Nails and Creative Creations. I saw what she did with some of these little Dollar Tree signs and knew I wanted to do the family sign for my house. The funny thing is, I had actually picked up the sign last week when I saw it at my local Dollar Tree, before I even saw Connie's video. I thought the sign was adorable, just like it was, but it just didn't match any of my decor at all. The first thing I did was to remove the front portion of the sign from the back. It was pretty simple to do. I just pulled on it and it started letting go. There was one spot that wanted to be stubborn. So I used my Cricut spatula and slid it between the two sections to loosen it up. I took the back section outside and spray painted it with Rust-Oleum flat white paint. While the back was drying, I painted the front with Waverly ink chalk paint. It's actually just black. I wanted the front to be completely covered, so I made sure I got around all the edges of the frame section and the letters. I then thought about this folk art brushed metal paint I had gotten from Plaid when I became a Plaid ambassador and thought I would use it. But I decided to go back to my favorite color, black. I'm not going to bore you again with repainting this. After I repainted it, I decided to distress it a little. I didn't want a lot of distressing, just a small amount. I used some 220 grit sandpaper and my finger sander to get the desired amount of distressing. I added hot glue to the frame and attached the front section to the back. I went around the outside of the frame with the same paint I had used on the front. This little family sign turned out so stinking cute. Let me know in the comments if you would have changed anything. It's going to look amazing on my living room shelf. Today is another Try It Tuesday collab hosted by Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. The host this month is Christy from Christy Creates DIY. Both of these women are wonderful and so stinking creative. You will find links to both of their channels in the description below. Now for DIY number two. This DIY project was inspired by an Instagram post I saw from Freckled Mom. I thought it was so adorable, I knew I had to try it. I found these old rain boots at a yard sale and knew they would be perfect for this recreation. As you can see, they had some bad spots on them. And sorry for the earthquake there. I used Awesome Cleaner and a dry eraser to remove as much as I could of the stuff from the boots. I don't know if it was dirt, mud, or what, but 
the good news is I was able to get rid of most of it. Next, I decided to use some Mod Podge on the boot. Plaid had sent me this hard coat Mod Podge, so I thought I'd give it a try since I had never used it before. I painted a good thick layer on the entire boot and left it to dry overnight. Once it was dry, I really couldn't tell a difference between this Mod Podge and the regular Mod Podge that I usually use. I guess I'll, I guess I'll find out what this type of Mod Podge is actually made for and do a video with it. I had a bunch of brown packaging paper that had come in a package from Amazon. I used it and stuffed it into the boot. I then found the styrofoam square and used it at the top of the paper to stick my flowers in. Now to decorate the boot with flowers and greenery. I had this bunch of greenery I had gotten from a yard sale for a dollar. How can you not? buy greenery this large for one dollar. I had to have it. I removed some of the fern leaves so I could use them in the boot. And guys, I don't know how I've done it again, but I seem to have lost some footage somewhere. I really am starting to think there is a footage monster in my house that keeps stealing it. But what I did I chose several different florals, placed them in the boot, and wow, this little boot planner turned out so stinking cute. And the best thing is, I can change out the florals for each season. Let me know in the comments what you think of this quick and easy DIY. The Try It Tuesday collaboration is a monthly open playlist where creators recreate one of their favorite projects by someone they admire. More about the playlist shortly. Now for DIY number three. This DIY was inspired by Teresa at Teresa B DIY. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description below. She used 8x10 canvases and I didn't have any. So I used a couple of these canvas signs from Dollar Tree. They are the square 10 inch frames. I removed the canvases from both using a pair of old tweezers and a pair of needle nose pliers. I didn't want to tear the canvases off because I have another idea for them. And let me tell you, these staples were really in the frame and it took me quite a while to get all of them out. At first I tried using super glue and hot glue to glue the frames together. But the super glue didn't work. I'm not really sure why it didn't work, but it didn't work. So, I took the frames apart and removed the hot glue and decided to just use wood glue to hold them together. I used small dabs of hot glue in the corners so I would have an immediate hold and didn't have to wait for the wood glue to dry before moving on to the next step. I cut down eight paint stir sticks to fit across the bottom of the frames and use wood glue to hold them together. I have an assortment of clips in a box that I use for holding things together. 
I used some of them to hold the wood sticks on the frame until the wood glue dried. After I had everything clamped together, I used a wet paper towel to remove any of the wood glue that had seeped out. And then I left the tray overnight to dry. The next morning, I removed all the clamps. And then hot glued some 10 millimeter beads I had gotten from Amazon around the top of the tray. I'll leave a link to the beads I purchased in the description also. And yes, I used my favorite paint, Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint, and painted the entire tray. You could leave the tray just like this, but as you know, I love the distressed look. To achieve the look I was going for, I used Waverly Elephant Gray chalk paint and a fan brush to distress the tray until I was happy with the amount of distressing. I got this amazing faux leather ribbon from Amazon. It's 10 yards long and it only cost me $10. This ribbon is fantastic. And I'm sure I'll be using it more in upcoming projects. I used a ruler to measure two and a quarter inches from the edge of the tray and made marks. I decided how long I wanted the handles to be and cut the leather into two sections, one for each side. I hot glued the handles to the tray I had these silver thumbtacks in my stash and decided to attach them to the handles also. I had to use a hammer to nail them in because I wasn't able to just push them in. My tray is totally different from Teresa's, but the inspiration for this project came from her channel. This tray can be used in so many ways, and I think it turned out perfect. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The Try It Tuesday playlist is full of some of the best DIYers on YouTube. You will find a link to the playlist in the description. I'm not kidding. This playlist is awesome. And you will definitely want to check it out and check out all of the creators on it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see y'all next time. Happy crafting.